Time having arrived, I call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order. I ask you to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone to our traditional evening of the first day of school, school committee meeting. Let me just grab my glasses so I can find out what's going on. So we open each meeting with hearing of visitors, um, an opportunity for members of the uh, public to speak directly to the school committee, the superintendent and myself. The ground rules for hearing of visitors is that time is limited to three minutes for comment and there is no direct response from the school committee. All matters are taken under advisement, but uh, everyone will listen very attentively and we, we do take the comments seriously, but we take them under advisement. So uh, signed in tonight, we have uh, Delenn Brumberger signed in. Yes, you have to come sit down here at the microphone. Yeah. There you go. Make yourself comfortable and relax, and the microphone's right there. Make sure we can hear you. Hello. There you go. <laughs> I, um, I didn't really know what to put for who I was representing because, well, what can you say when you're topic is teen bullying and suicide. But um, I've got to say it was rather alarming when I realized just how common suicide is and the incredibly strong link it has to bullying. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in people ages 10 through 24. And that should say something in and of itself. Starting with the fact that we don't even start talking about bullying and its connection to suicide until grade six. And frankly, this bullying, it starts in elementary. It starts as soon as elementary begins. And the fact that we, as people, do nothing when we see one of our friends in distress, be it a friend that we used to have or a friend that we've yet to meet. The most disappointing thing I've ever seen is a crowd of boys crowding around a young girl who's three years younger to them than them, shouting at her, calling her names. And for once, the loud mouth is quiet. And for once, for once, that teacher, that student looks to the teacher for help. And she stands there. The teacher just stands there and watches this and does nothing. And then the bell rings. And that child, well. It doesn't end well. I'd like to advocate that the relationship between bullying and suicide is introduced in elementary school. I'm not saying we are introducing this to first graders and kindergartners, but maybe fifth grade, or dare I say it, fourth. Because Let's face it, things like this, it spreads. It starts out as a name someone calls another kid in kindergarten. And then it becomes their nickname. And then it becomes something that looms over them through middle school and winds up getting them hazed in high school. And then someone's neck winds up in a noose. I really can't say it any other way and I really can't be any more blunt. I'd also think that pamphlets 
maybe even cards of hotlines and numbers to call would be a good idea. In fact, I have a few for you to start off with, even some posters. I can't really say much about the Dear Evan Hansen ones. They're, they're cheesy. But um, normally I'd add a joke here or something to lighten the mood, but <laughs> there is nothing that can lighten the mood of a talk between suicide and bullying that is appropriate in any way. And don't get me wrong, people make them, especially people my age and much, much younger, to the point where it's starting to be incredibly concerning and disturbing. But another thing I find disturbing a thing that's not really addressed at all. Absolutely no teacher who sees bullying happening in the classroom says a word. I think I've had like one teacher say something ever since I got into a Brockton public school, which should be humiliating. But it's not because kids will be kids. Anyone else think that's wrong? Not a rhetorical question. <laughs> that I do. I have student and parent pamphlets right up here. 15 of each, I believe he already has a student pamphlet. some cards. Okay, all right, so we'll make sure that that material gets distributed to all the members of the school committee. All right, that, oh, go ahead. You can if you'd like. Um, one thing I will uh, say to the school committee is, certainly you know one of the pillars of our uh, strategic plan is uh, about uh, social and emotional safety of our students. We take that very seriously. We talk about trauma-sensitive schools. We talk about paying attention to the whole child. You can always improve on everything that you're doing. I thank Daylin for coming and sharing with us some concerns that she has. Uh, but I assure you, with our counselors and our teachers, this training, uh, this is uh, certainly something that we deal with on uh, a daily basis. Uh, it isn't just the name calling, it's the social media. It's things that are very different than probably when many of us went to school. So uh, our teachers are on the front line. Uh, our principals, um, and, and this is obviously something that we uh, take very seriously, that our children come to school with the ability to make friends, uh, su succeed academically, socially, emotionally, uh, in all those areas. And I want to, as I said, there's always room for improvement, but I want to compliment our teachers that are on that front line and deal with these things each and every day, our counselors, our support staff, and we'll involve students to make sure that we're meeting their needs if there are areas that, that again, we can take a look at in a better way. Okay, thank you, Superintendent. Um, at this time, we'll move on to our consent agenda. The consent agenda is a manner in which the school committee acts on a block of routine business as one entity. However, any individual member of the school committee may request that any individual agenda item be removed for separate discussion and consideration. So at this time, I'll ask if any members of the school committee would like to request that any items be taken out of tonight's consent agenda. Okay, not hearing any requests. I'll entertain a motion on the entire consent agenda. We have a motion. Second. Properly seconded, all in favor? Approved, thank you. So at this time, I'll hand the meeting over to the superintendent of schools uh, for the superintendent's report on teaching and learning. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to report that uh, yesterday um, our teachers came back. I would like to sit here and tell you over 1,400 teachers, which is what I usually say to you uh, each and every, day, every year when we have our opening. 
Uh, this year we were minus uh, 80 teachers, we were minus uh, an additional uh, 220 support staff, and quite honestly, uh, when I address the teachers, and I do thank those of you, I know that you work, but I know you did make time in your schedules to come yesterday. I think it was important for all of us knowing exactly what we're dealing with, um, certainly with this year ahead of us with a lot of challenges to be able to have that very open discussion. So a couple of things that were positives, and our whole theme was all about hope and inspiration, because I truly believe you know, in our staff that they will you know, rise to the occasion, um, they will do whatever they have to do to make sure, and I've said it before, that child's first time in first grade, or that child's senior year in high school, all those things don't change because we have uh, struggles and challenges. And one of the things that we said yesterday uh, to our teachers is we don't want our struggles to be their concerns when they're coming into school. And I, and I will report very honestly about what today was like. But talking about yesterday, uh, one of the first things uh, that if you came in, you saw, and this was a note uh, from a teacher. We had also discussed it, if you remember, at our last meeting uh, last week about the Hurricane Harvey victims. So we very quickly uh, set up a station for collection of all kinds of different items for the relief effort. We set up, and I wanted to bring it today, and of course I forgot it. It was actually a water cooler jug decorated with one of the yellow ribbons um, with the relief effort for Harvey where people could donate funds. This is going to be in each one of our schools. But it was really heartwarming to see the teachers come through and make sure that they're sharing. We're looking to either uh, possibly adopt a school in Texas Mayor or we're looking to connect with the uh, MTA who I know has a relief effort going on. So we will continue to do that throughout the district and we will support uh, those victims. I also want to bring to your attention and I hope when we do show a couple of pictures of not only opening day for teachers but opening day for students, we were trying to think of a way to signify those 80 teachers that were missing, our teaching force, um, and what we did was we highlighted each of the 80 chairs, we put them throughout the uh, seating area in the auditorium, and we talked about those teachers that were missing from our teaching force. And we will not be whole as a district, because when I report to you the numbers, we have more students today than we had a year ago, and yet I have 80 less teachers. So that should be concerning to all of us, and it was something we talked about yesterday. What we did talk about with hope and inspiration was building a strong culture and climate for all our teachers and our staff. We're going to do it in a number of ways. We're going to do it by creating teacher leaders in our schools, taking on and working with administration to discuss how we can involve businesses to adopt a school, how we can work even better with families to bring them in. Look at volunteers in our schools. For any number of efforts, I've started to meet with some of the large uh, business owners uh, in our city to talk about ways that we can not just collaborate but truly start to uh, adopt our schools. Um, we're also going to be leading off with a very special event uh, for our teachers and our staff, staff appreciation, which is going to be on Friday night, October 13th. So we're welcoming our teachers to come to uh, one of our home football games uh, to take part in an evening that will represent to our community how appreciated our teachers and our staff are. We're asking them to come with their families, see our wonderful halftime show, and hopefully get some support from businesses and be able to, to have a, a nice evening for everybody. I'm also opening up something that I remember as a teacher in the district. Uh, Superintendent Matt George, I think, was one of the first, and it really was around a time of challenges and struggle. What he did do was start a superintendent advisory, and that is meeting with teachers, um, volunteers from throughout the district, where they come, there are questions, there's dialogue, and there's sharing of some of the things that, that we can do better throughout the district. Those will be monthly meetings, and I will host those at different sites um, throughout the district, and hope, hopefully have a cadre of teachers that come each time and are reporting back uh, to their fellow teachers. So we're looking to develop teacher leaders in, in many different ways. Um, we obviously did talk about the challenges ahead. Most specifically, we talked about the legal challenges. And we made it very clear that we are, again, uh, looking to sit down and name a lead plaintiff. Uh, the mayor and I had conversation again today. I thought it was um, very helpful to move us forward in ways that we can concentrate wh whatever it is uh, around an issue that we can all get around, certainly the equity for our students and what they're facing in the classrooms. So we are moving forward on all this. This is just not chatter or talk. It is actually action and we have, uh, it's something that I can now focus on. School is up and going and we'll be able to see uh, you know, what we're dealing with. 
I think my favorite part of the morning, Mayor, uh, I will tell you, uh, at first I was going to quote uh, Big Poppy David Ortiz. <laughs> To I get got the, in trouble when I did that. I, right, I, uh, but I thought better of it. And I think the best quote is uh, one I said to the, um, to the teachers yesterday. And I was waking up last week and we were hearing about Julian Edelman and his injuries and unfortunately being lost for the season for the Patriots. And I love that he said, and I think he re-quoted re somebody else, but it was tough times don't last, but tough people do. So, you know, that is going to be our mantra for the year. Uh, I know our teachers will come together and our staff and support our students. And quite honestly, in talking about our student report today, I think that ties right in. I think it was a great kickoff. Uh, people understand the challenges that we're facing. Um, a couple of things uh, about today, and I'm going to talk about the superintendent view, and then I'm going to ask uh, a couple of the um, executive directors to come up and to talk to you about particular areas uh, that they oversaw today. But in going out there, and I, I went to the Hancock this morning, I was at Brockton High School, I went to West Middle School, it is still amazing. And again, there are challenges, I was counting heads in every one of those classes, but the teachers, as we tell you every year, and any of you that had an opportunity, Mayor, I know you were out today also, you know, if you are in those schools, you're watching children, first of all, thank you to parents, you know, children came prepared for their first day. They looked excited. It was great to have everybody back, you know, meeting their teachers. The kids came with little bags of, it could have been Kleenex or the, um, you know, the wipes for the classroom, all kinds of things where teachers have put out lists and said if everybody could help out a little bit. So thank you to the families and the communities that continue to support those teachers uh, in the classroom. But very quickly, once they found their teachers, they were inside, they were going over you know, the rules, the protocols for the older children in the classroom. It was amazing to me from the littlest kids to the biggest kids, the things that were going on throughout our schools. I wanna thank our facilities, custodial staff, we're down 10 custodians, and, and there are some areas that still we're working to get ready uh, for school, but for the most part, the classrooms were prepared you know, for the students, it had a nice shine, it felt good being in the rooms, and it was something I think that we can uh, all be proud of. Um, you know, I, I went into classes. I have to tell you, I struggled. So I find myself when the bell rang up at the high school, and those of you that have been at the high school know what happens when the bell rings and, you know, almost 4,200 students are, are walking the halls. So I, I do look official. I did have my badge on. And I can't tell you how many came up to me to ask me where the classrooms were they were going to. Now, I could point to the gym. I could show them the fine arts, but when it came to the very particular classrooms, thank goodness, uh, I believe Dr. Murray had his uh, students out that were student mentors that were you know, helping to, to lead the way up at the high school. Um, I, I have to tell you, in looking at the Gilmore School, which I actually ran out to later in the afternoon, and I wanted to see our new elementary school transferring from the Huntington to the Gilmore, and you know, I, I loved it. First of all, I have to tell you, and I know there are people that don't agree, but I love the uniforms. And I want to tell you, there were 100% of the students in their you know, khaki pants, their navy blue shirts. They were excited to tell me they weren't the Huntington Hawks, they were now Gilmore. And when I looked around uh, the cafeteria, they were excited to have a hot lunch. So when you think of almost 600 students for the first time, and I know we had conversation about this, but to watch them, and I didn't get to watch, I actually saw pictures, I got there after lunch, and you'll see some of those, you know, the kids looking at the selections of a hot lunch. Uh, the, the gym, Brian McCarthy, who does just a fabulous job, you know, from the Huntington now to the Gilmore with Phys Ed, you know, was just thrilled to have that space, a, a large gym. So um, I, again, uh, am very, very pleased with that transition. Uh, Deputy Superintendent Thomas will tell you about the traffic. You know, it is a little farther. If somebody lived right next to the Huntington School, it's probably about a half mile, I think, to the Gilmore if you were right on Market Street there. So, um, you know, very, very pleased uh, with the opening uh, throughout the district. Um, I also felt, I know there were cars that were frustrated, and Mayor, you and I talked about the residents you know, concerned about backups on Forest Ave. As you can imagine, parents like to drive the first day, even when you talk about high school students. So when you're used to the summer being a, a little bit easier, but I felt the people were respectful, um, so I, I was very pleased. Um, I will be sending a, a letter home uh, to families, again, telling them about the advocacy and welcoming them this year, which is a little bit different than what I usually do. 
but tell them that we're really trying to have strong PACs, PTAs, PTOs, get involved. We're talking about volunteers. We're talking about events for families. So we will continue to keep them in the loop uh, as we do those things. So um, I'm going to first ask uh, Deputy Superintendent Thomas to come up and to give us an update on the facilities and transportation. Good evening. Um, I want to thank first, I want to thank the school police, the Brockton police. Uh, I was on the phone with the mayor earlier this morning. Um, Lieutenant Mills had his offices spread out throughout the schools, all three tiers. Uh, the mayor and, and the uh, police chief provided extra support from the Brockton police, so that's always a big help the first few days of school. Um, obviously, uh, we transport um, 9,000 students throughout the district. Um, it's always slow. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we, weren't, we didn't have delays in buses and vans. Um, a lot of it is um, with the vans, there's addresses that change um, and then we're not informed. So the van goes to the wrong house and then by the time we figure out the right house, that holds things up. The first day, as you know, uh, on a three-tiered transportation system, um, Broughton High is loaded with cars, especially the first um, the week of school. So the buses and vans do get held up probably about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, which obviously puts them another 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes behind at tier two. Then once they iron out the kinks at the middle schools, that's another, that they delayed usually another 10 to 15 minutes. Now you move to the elementary schools. Now you're pretty much about a half hour behind schedule mm -hmm. for the buses and vans. So um, that was like that in the morning. It continued to be like that in the afternoon. Uh, I got an all clear from first student at 4.45 this afternoon when every bus and van was back in the yard. So um, we encourage parents to call, call the schools, call my office, the transportation office if they are having issues with, with transportation. We, and again, I, we know there were, and we always have these the first, um, usually the first week of school and then they iron themselves out and then we throw a wrench into it again when we start kindergarten on September 18th. And, will be delayed again for another couple. That, usually that irons out a little bit quicker than the first few days of school. But um, the schools, there's a lot of traffic. I s went to about nine schools today. Um, and there's a lot of traffic on the first day. There's some parents learning the traffic pattern that each principal has different sets, setups at each school. Um, but overall, again, it, you know, it took a while, but you know, every kid got home safe. Um, there were no accidents in the parking lots. Um, Again, the school police and the Brockton police were a big help. Uh, I was out this morning with a few other people at the Gilmore to make sure our crossing guards are in the proper locations for the kids now walking from the Huntington neighborhood making their way over to the Gilmore. So we put 10 crossing guards throughout the, the neighborhood and at the most busiest intersections. And um, so we wanted to make sure that we didn't miss any spots with any crossing guards. So we thought that looked pretty good. We'll monitor that over the next couple of days as well. We'll be back out there um, to make sure we didn't miss a busy intercession that really needs a crossing guard. Um, so we wanted to cover those areas. Overall, again, it was um, buses and vans were late, and um, there was a lot of traffic at most of our parking lots. Um, the Gilmore was rough. In the morning went well in the parking lot with the cars. The afternoon took a lot more time. Um, the principal, the assistant principal, actually Officer Vaughn was there this afternoon and he'll be working with them on coming up with the best model for that, how that parking lot would work a little bit better. So that needs to be tweaked. Um, but overall, it, it went pretty well. So I can answer any questions about any, you probably got some calls about buses and vans being laid or uh, kids being brought back to schools. But, and also, the, um, we started this year, obviously, uh, we're down from 50 buses to 48. Um, four buses at Brockton High School are making double runs with about 200 students. Um, I didn't hear any complaints from the high school, so I don't think it, there was a problem. Um, we sent out a Connect Ed call to those 200 parents last Friday to let them know that the bus would be picking them up between 6.15 a.m. and 6.20. The bus pickup usually is 6.30 for high school kids, but that first, that double run, they're going to pick those kids up at about 6.15, 6.20,
drop them at the high school between 6.30 and 6.40, and then go back and, and, and do, um, the, that's where the double run will be done. And that's about 200 kids. And actually for the first day, that worked very well. Um, and that, again, helped us save the, um, the two buses that we were short. Uh, and we were able to, to keep the elementary and the middle schools at the same. Obviously, all the bus stops stay, stayed the same. All the routes stayed the same. Um, and we didn't have any changes for the walkouts for middle school or elementary. So uh, the double runs went well. I know that's something that Mr. Minicello has sp talked about for years. And um, it was good that we were able to get first student to agree to do that this year. And that's, that's really helped. Um, about our website if they want to track the buses um, look at the different routes because I did have some phone calls today but it, you know it's still the first day of school so for the next few days but they can actually go on to our BPS website find the different bus locations I know you mentioned they put them into the newspaper yes um, so if anyone has any questions pretty much our website gives you a lot of info so just utilize what's on there yeah, they, we put a full page ad in, in, the, in the enterprise. Um, it, was, um, it, it was about a week and a half ago on a Thursday, and also that has been updated on the website for all the bus routes. Um, it is hard getting through the transportation line. It's, it's, I, I actually have to walk across to see Peggy, who runs transportation, because I can't get her on the phone because there's so many people calling. So we encourage people, if you can't get a hold of the transportation line, then feel free to call the superintendent's office. Uh, and, and if Peggy can't uh, take the call at that time, I'm happy to take calls as well. So you know, if people have questions, uh, uh, they're nervous about a bus getting home late and you know, where their child is, we're happy to, to take any of those calls. We encourage people to call if they have issues. Mr. Minicello, <coughs> I would just like to take a moment to um, thank the mayor with respect to the funds that he did commit to busing. And um, Peggy and you, Mike, um, and for a student for being creative and thinking outside the box. Because parents, uh, I, I don't think parents are really aware that this uh, busing season was, there was a chance that we were going to have to extend the busing zones at certain uh, levels and that certain high school students uh, were not going to be able to get a bus but for the commitment of funds. Uh, we're still not out of the woods but, but you know the mayor has given us every indication that we will somehow figure it out for this year and you know through the savings of those couple of buses. Um, so you know collaboratively we put our heads together and figured out a way in light of the 16 million dollar budget deficit um, you know, we, we're all not happy with respect to where we are with our budget, certainly with regard to, um, you know, net school spending. Um, but, you know, on the non-net school side, uh, you know, it, it could have been, you know, uh, it could have been a problem. And, um, you know, knock on wood, uh, people were willing to, again, think outside the box. And we figured out a way to make it work, which is, you know, beneficial for all the kids. Um, you know, we don't, we all know in this room that, uh, the streets of Brockton are busier than they've ever been. And, you know, to be honest with you, <laughs> with regard to, you know, my profession, the city of Brockton is so full with people. Try to find an apartment in the city of Brockton and you are hard pressed. So what does that mean? There are more people living in the city. There are more cars on the road. When you go by, um, you know, people's houses, um, you know, years ago, uh, when we grew up, you know, mom, I'm sorry, dad had a car or mom had a car and they would share it. And then eventually it was a big deal when you got a second car. Well, today you go into driveways and, you know, the kids have cars, mom and dad have a car. Um, so there's a lot more traffic in the city. Um, and, you know, with regard to safety, that's number one. If we can't keep our kids safe, you know, what are we basically doing in the school district? So. You know, um, you know, the more kids that we can keep on the buses that are within those zones uh, and off the streets to put them potentially in harm's way because we all know we have some very busy main drags in the city, uh, you know, in all corners of the city, in all the wards. So um, I'm just very happy that we were able to, you know, cobble out a solution uh, with everyone's help. 
absolutely. And it's important to note in that non-net school spending budget, um, all the crossing guards were fully funded, and that's important because um, we still have, you know, there's 9,000 kids that take buses, but there's six, you know, basically 7,000 kids that are walking. That's a lot of kids walking to school. And yep. A year or so ago, helped us out when we needed help, um, and they basically stepped up to adjust. Uh, the numbers so that it was workable for us. So, you know, they deserve some credit yep. with respect to the crossing guard solution as well. Yeah, so, and they're out there all the time, yeah. with them, and especially when the weather gets bad. It's yep. not easy getting out there when it's snowing and there's, you know, snow banks everywhere. They, they always yeah. rain. They're out there all the time. So, obviously, it's a big help, help to get the kids school, to school safely. Mr. Sullivan. I'd like to commend you, Mike. For your work that you do, that they added 100, 125 buses in Brockton today alone, without accidents, without an incident, is fantastic. You ought to be commended, the school police, the Brockton police, as well as the mayor, for a job well done. Thank you. Well, thank you. I mean, I think it's more Peggy than it is me, but I appreciate that, and I'll pass it along. It just. You know, a lot of people work hard to to make sure things run. Yep, we appreciate it. It's it's a lot. It's a team effort, and a lot of people that care a lot about kids. Obviously, the safety of kids, and that's that's how it all works. So, you know, you have to do it as a team. But I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mr. D'Agostino. Real quick, I just wanted to make sure we thank the the crossing guards that got that that go from the Huntington area over to the Gilmore. That was one of the big concerns parents had. And, and honestly, the principals in that south zone there, too, all expressed to me about is, is making sure that we were going to have enough crossing guards to get the kids from now on the other side over to the Gilmore safely. Um, and it sounds like the, uh, you know, we've got that done and, and had a good plan in place to continue to make sure we, we continue to do that. that. That was a vital part of, of that transition being successful. So um, please make sure that will do appreciation gets thank back you. to those who made that happen i will thank you um just to uh, let you know the numbers uh this year uh 15,316 were in attendance today on our rolls um, another 1182 are signed up at this point in kindergarten that registration presently is on hold until we can get our students into school and I think the number that is staggering is the uh, Student Registration Parent uh, Information Center let me know from June 1st through September 6th, 4,459 people, and that's a, you know, a family might come with three or four people, one person signs in for a transaction, a registration, uh, any number of things. So they have been very busy, of course, leading up to school, which is always what happens. So we anticipate that 1,182 number you know, to grow. If you look at the numbers, um, as I said, kindergarten right now is presently uh, 1,182. Your first grade is 1,351. Your second grade is 1,371, very close. Your third grade is 1,377, a little bit larger. Uh, fourth grade, 1379, and then your fifth grade, which I will remind you was the year you opened the Barrett Russell at the time because of the very large kindergarten numbers. That number of fifth graders is 1472, and that's where we find a real struggle, you know, presently with our class sizes. It's interesting because those of you have probably seen articles in the Enterprise and a number of papers about the demographics in a lot of the towns and the numbers dwindling for school age children. And quite honestly, I don't see ours really dwindling much at all um, when you take into account some of the things that have hit the public school recently. So um, again, that's pretty much uh, where we started today. Um, I will talk about some of the programs, but let me uh, call up, uh, I'll start with Dr. Cliff Murray uh, from uh, Brockton High School, our principal, that he can uh, give us an update on the high school today. Students. 
and we still have folders that are sitting there that are not processed. That's who's processed uh, and are in classes at this point. Yep. So good evening. Uh, thank you for having me. It was uh, really an incredible first day of school. Um, we have over 4,100 students registered, uh, over 3,800 attended today. Um, aside from the normal uh, confusion that goes with those numbers, I thought it was an incredibly smooth start. Um, we have 170 student mentors who are out in the hallways assisting freshmen with their schedules and just the you know, general routine of the, of the school. Um, we also had a lot of students that weren't mentors helping out the freshmen as well. It's a really a very positive atmosphere with the students. The staff was engaged. Um, I, I thought it was a fantastic start. Um, this morning, the students who hadn't picked up their IDs and schedules, um, the staffs in all four houses handled that very quickly. Some changes in schedules were made, but we didn't seem to really have any issues with the early buses. And then the end of the day, again, seemed to be a pretty smooth dismissal. So I was very impressed with the students and the way they handled themselves, and then uh, very thankful for the professionalism and the, uh, the attitude and the performance of the entire staff. So it's really, uh, I really enjoyed myself today. I told the superintendent, I, I had a blast. Uh, it's a great, great building. The, the classrooms, uh, the, they dove right into the, the teaching. There were some rooms that were really crowded with students and I poked my head in and said, geez, I have you know, eight or nine more kids. Can I bring them in? And the kids were, sure, go ahead. I mean, there were, there were no seats. And uh, just a really positive attitude and uh, a really good, uh, really good feeling, a great start to the year. So I was very pleased and very impressed uh, with, with everyone here, including the students, the parents, all fantastic. Uh, when I uh, talk about the high school, I do want to mention uh, last week we talked about some uh, new updates with the uh, JROTC instructor. We're presently processing papers. We hope to have an additional Correct. instructor on board. We talked about that uh, last Tuesday. We continue to use the student parent portal, which we also will be using at the middle schools this year. So we'll start to open up. I want to thank Kevin DuPont and his staff that's going to work with our district staff because when you open up portals, you expect, and this is through Infinite Campus, parents or students can get their schedules very easily. We're hoping to get to a point where there's communications with the teachers and our students, especially our older students. When you look at opportunities for parents to go on and eventually look at attendance, look at grading, look at possible ways that the teachers are connecting with students throughout the district. So these are discussions that we continue. The mayor and I had a long discussion today about one-to-one uh, -one devices or one-to-many devices and really starting to support our students in a way that that just becomes part and parcel of what they carry around every day with them. And that's how, I mean, this is what this generation expects. We will continue to move in that direction but we'll work as a district to, to start to make some of these happen, especially at our middle and high school level. Any questions? Any really, questions? I invite all of you to come to the high school. I, I think the energy and the enthusiasm, just the entire atmosphere, there is uh, something to behold and uh, was very impressive. When is our first football game? Well, we have our home opener September 15th, but we had volleyball this afternoon, oh, which good. was uh, very exciting. Wow. Uh, went to a soccer match last night, boys soccer this evening. Uh, there are things happening already. So, and I would encourage people uh, to really give consideration to that October 13th date. We've spoken to the uh, alumni coordinator, and uh, it's also, I believe, potentially the dedication for the statue. Is it the statue dedication? I yeah, think, isn't that? I'm not that? sure if we're 100% confirmed yet. But All right. I think that's well, the date again, I, with, I think that was a target date. Yeah, anyway. I think we're working but with that date. You know, right we're, we're trying like to uh, get everybody to come and, and hopefully really enjoy what I've always found to be a very, very uh, family friendly and very welcoming atmosphere uh, at a football mm -hmm. game. So I'm Good. encouraging everybody to attend. Thank you very Great. much. Great. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, June Saber McGuire to come up and talk to us uh, again about the opening at our elementary. I know she was also out and probably can talk to us a little bit about the middle schools. We'll be very pleased.
our Chief Academic Officer and Chief Student Support Services. Thank you. Sharon, you've got to be at more than just one building, oh. one big building. Yes. So I was excited to have Sharon join me today. We were actually a split team, so it was nice to have her um, to work alongside with because she was out in quite a few of our elementary schools, and I know she's excited about learning about that work. So I thank her for today and giving me some good feedback. Um, so I would say that despite all the challenges, all the conflict that was connected to the budget season, and not that those challenges don't still exist within our school, we had an excellent opening at the elementary level. I was able to visit two schools, two of the elementary schools today, the Gilmore. Um, I have to say it was just what a, an amazing environment that existed in that school today. The kids were incredibly excited about the very small but important things in life, like Miss Sabo, we have air conditioning. And they were really excited, and how important was that today? But of course, it comes down to the food. So at the end of the day, they could not wait to get to that cafeteria and enjoy the, um, the, the options that they were gonna have for lunch. But the teachers were really very positive today. And they were apprehensive about leaving the Huntington, but in the conversations that I had with quite a few of them today, they really expressed how um, just immediately comfortable they felt in that building and how comfortable the kids felt. So um, I think that was just really a, such a positive experience despite the apparent um, confusion and mild chaos at dismissal, which I know that they'll get rectified very quickly. And then I went over to the George, and I have to say, again, another one of our schools that's implementing a new um, uniform while well, they're doing a pilot uniform policy this year, and 75% of the kids were in uniform today. So um, Natalie Pohl was really excited about that. Parents were very positive. Again, the learning environment there, despite, again, some of the conflict that has existed because of our budget. I would say our teachers and administrators were just, they created a, a, such a positive experience for our kids today. I also get to, got to go over to the PLUF. Um, again, same thing. I mean, amazing that people just don't skip a beat. You wouldn't know that it was the first day back from a summer vacation with the learning that was already happening in those classrooms. I do have to say one of the things that I did notice in all of the schools, um, you know, and it's, it's just the reality of the situation is that our classes are, there are a lot of kids in our classrooms right now. And in a couple of the classes, one in particular that I really noted at the PLUF was a science class. I think it had about 33 kids in it. Um, I did a head count. But although the students were um, obviously very engaged, the teacher so positive, there was a section of the classroom that had to be set up with a table off to the side for a couple of the students that didn't quite fit into the regular classroom environment. But those were some of the things that we saw that again, although they're not what we want, the teachers in those classrooms and the administrators really welcomed the kids today. So, um, and Sharon visited a couple of other classes, other schools, and I know she had some positive um, experiences in those buildings. I did. Uh, I was at the Raymond and the Angelo this morning for elementaries, and both of them off to a great start. The Raymond, everyone in their uniforms, uh, the children were all learning routines, and I think that's a key thing when you're teaching kids expectations, you really have to focus on routines and practicing the routines. And so I got to see that in action at every grade level uh, at the Raymond. I was also at the Angelo and they were doing similar learning each other's names and getting used to routines. And it really was very positive atmosphere. Uh, some concerns at the Angelo in terms of support staff looking ahead uh, as they were talking about some of the difficulties and some of the needs of the students, and so we had those discussions. Um, I was also at uh, the Huntington, and they were getting used to the space, and they're working through getting used to the space, but they were uh, off to a great start this morning. Uh, and I was at the Keith, 
and again, some support staff concerns, but they were also off to a great start. Uh, and I went to North, and I think the biggest uh, thing that I noticed at North, everything was great. The new principal was doing a fabulous job. She took me to a classroom for social science that had 45 students in it, and they had to teach it in the cafeteria because there wasn't a classroom large enough for a group of kids. Um, a class of 45, uh, but didn't complain about it. The teacher said, we'll make the best we can of it and got the class started right away and they just kept going. So there was some great resilience there on behalf of the teacher and the kids and you know, everyone seemed to be excited to be back and adjusting to the changes that uh, we've experienced. Uh, an important concern and as we did tell the school committee and Aldo Petronio will do a budget update these are the things that we're continuing to look at as we see these numbers and we talk about you know classes uh, such as you know Sharon uh, Wolder just spoke about these are things that we will start to address once we at least get through this week um, with, with as they mentioned there's paraprofessional concerns um, there's a, here's a for instance you know at the Downey School um, we have a lot of medically involved students, our special needs students. And we had a um, para uh, health support to the nurse there, and that mattered in a lot of different ways. So we're going to have to take a look. Uh, as I said, we wanted to get school up and going, so we were being very strategic and careful about, you know, and again, we have 92 paras out. That should tell us something right now. That when you open the doors, and all of a sudden you realize that that support that you had in a large classroom, an SEI classroom, a nurse's office, I could go on and on with the support we have become used to in the Brockton Public Schools. So that very much is your support staff. So the mayor and I had a lengthy discussion. I know he's going to address it this evening. Um, we continue to look for pockets and ways um, of, and I don't want to say savings, but possibly teachers getting jobs, so unemployment becomes a savings. We will continue to talk to you about those teaching positions, support positions, and we, as, as I said, are being very strategic to look at what we need in each one of our schools. Um, so, I, I oh, please, Mayor. So I wanted to share with the school committee that um, in meeting with the superintendent today, I did express my concern regarding support staff, so I really appreciate uh, Sharon specifically mentioning support staff and as concerned as we are about still being down 80 teachers, I am really concerned about being down 220 support staff and particularly 90 some odd paraprofessionals because if we're going to live with some larger class sizes, the paraprofessionals become more important than ever. The teachers need those paras and we've also got some fragile kids with challenges that need paras and might not have them right now today. So, you know, we had a really frank and open discussion about where do we try to identify some funds to, to get some paras back. And I know that the um, school committee has been very supportive of the superintendent in terms of strategic callback of teachers but I, I think that as a group now, we've really, in addition to all the other needs that we need to try to cover, that I really think there's got to be a focus right now on trying to identify some funds to get some of these paraprofessionals back into the classrooms. And I, all of them, but particularly SPED and bilingual parents. Um, so we, we did talk with Aldo and with Jay Condon and tried to come up with some ideas. We may be able to identify a few funds and um, Aldo's working on looking at any potential savings from unemployment. Uh, so, you know, I just want to share with the committee that we you know, had that conversation and I think we're looking to all work together over the next few weeks to figure out how to get these powers back in the classrooms. Thank you. And before you leave, I do have to say, uh, when I was at the Gilmore, my favorite part of the day was this little, little peanut who happened to be a kindergartner and showed up for the day. So she got to spend the day. So I do want to remind parents that kindergarten first day is September 18th. We're looking forward to welcoming our kindergarten students, but she didn't have a care in the world and she was very happy to 
to be at the Gilmore, she can share with her classmates that story probably for the rest of her life. So it was very cute. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Any updates on the Barrett, how that transition was? Well, we were actually going to give them a couple of days. The teachers just reported back yesterday, and the students don't report back till September 18th. So okay. we're going to give them a couple of days to start unpacking, getting their rooms together, and then go over there and check in to see how they're doing. Perfect. We, of course, visited, I want to say, two weeks ago. So you saw the work in progress. Um, the work is, is pretty much done. We actually thank you again to Deputy Superintendent Thomas and our wonderful facilities team that moved everybody around this summer. And they were there today to make sure they were, I think there were a team of additional uh, four uh, custodians there who were supporting uh, you know, the moving of boxes or the moving of all those things anybody deals with in a move. So hopefully those classes will be up and running as uh, June Saver McGuire mentioned where leaving them alone to give them a chance to now set up their rooms. We'll continue, as we told you, to um, monitor our preschool students, our preschool special needs students coming back. I think the building, and you got a chance to see it, looks beautiful. The grounds look terrific. The playground equipment is there. There's wonderful space uh, set aside for the students. There are bathrooms in classrooms. It was uh, uh, certainly a labor of love, and I know that we're doing everything we can to make sure when we report to you on the 18th that they also have a, a wonderful first day and an experience in the Brockton Public Schools. Great, okay. thank you. Um, I want to mention um, with Aldo Petronio the budget update. Um, Aldo, you want to join me and we'll just quickly go over it. But I do want to mention to everybody as we, and I keep using the word strategic and I'm very serious about it, but we do have to look at some things uh, as a district. So there are some positions uh, that we're going to have to look at. We had a very part-time, um, what we called a web manager. Uh, it was one of our retired personnel that helped us out for the past couple of years. The person finally is looking to retire. So we have to look at, especially when you look at this day and age, when you talk about the web, when you talk about communication. So these are positions that, as I said, as the dust settles, I will start to identify for you some positions we need in the district. And I also want to mention, because I think there's always confusion when you talk about administrative positions, I recently mentioned to you, and I want to be clear that when we have grants, sometimes grants are for specific purposes. And one is the Title IIA grant, which we look at for our associate principals at the middle school level. And I want to mention, as far as those positions go, those are your curriculum positions. You have curriculum positions at the high school in the form of department heads. You have curriculum positions at the elementary school in the form of um, instructional uh, leadership coaches to support literacy, to support STEM, to support the curriculum happening at our schools. But at the middle schools, our associate principals, and probably in most of our middle schools, they're shared positions this year. But I know there was concern about other programs for kids and why are we you know, bringing back associate principals. This is your curriculum support for your level one and two. And I want you to think about not just your high school, but your middle schools, most of them are level one and two schools. And that has been a lot of the support for your teachers, along with the instruction with your common planning time. So I, I just want to make clear that sometimes when you have funding of a certain nature, that's what the funding is used for. So we're trying to balance, and I continue to say this, whether it's extracurricular, whether it's athletics, the music program, and, and again, if I don't say it enough, and I know you heard me say it, those of you that were there yesterday, I really want to thank the mayor, the school committee, because I don't think people realize the time. I can't even imagine the hours if we started back last March when we started with these budget discussions. Um, and the time that you have put in, it's been very deliberate. Um, you have spent a lot of time with advocacy. You have spent a lot of time you know, questioning and trying to do the very best, which is why when you hear about today and the challenges, you also heard about a smooth start. You heard about people you know, relying on us to make sure that their child had a great experience. There are kids in homes all over Brockton today excited about their friends, excited about what happened in school, excited about their clean classrooms, excited about transportation, all those things we want for our children just as any community wants. So if, um, again, sometimes I think elected officials do not get thanked enough, 
but I want to thank you because I know the difficulties that you certainly have been facing uh, in trying to get school up and going. So Aldo, can we just, um, just go over our numbers that we have now in our last round? Sure. Um, from the meeting last week, we had our uh, finance committee meeting. We discussed um, that we were looking for three additional certified positions and two um, uh, para positions at that meeting. Um, it was stressed that we were looking for a fourth certified position for music. So in going through um, what I'm looking at at unemployment savings, basically the easy way to understand unemployment is I, I budgeted 20 weeks of unemployment for everyone that we laid off. Granted, you're allowed 30, but because we had such a tight, tight budget, I only went with a 20-week figure, knowing that many people do get positions elsewhere. So as we get notified of people who have accepted positions in other districts or um, have just resigned, I go through the system and I call out those people and put that savings. I look at how many weeks they used of the 20 weeks and at what point they left. So that savings is what I put into the budget barometer. That's what allowed us to pick up the four certified positions, the two clerical positions that we talked about. Uh, not clerical, I'm sorry, uh, para positions. One's a clerical para. And also, um, we discussed the third JROTC instructor that is funded um, half of it from the government, from the military, and the other half we're funding with the reimbursement from last year for the two we currently have. So, um, with that, we were able to bring down uh, the number of RIFs, both in the certified category and in the para category. Paras went from 94 down to 92, certified went from 84, I think, down to 80. Um, that are uh, currently still um, rift. So um, as time progresses, I get reports both from the unemployment office from the state and from our system of people who have actually resigned. Um, some people actually hold out until they, they may get a job in another district, but hold out to see if they get called back in Brockton, literally right up to the last minute, to decide which one they're going to take. So we don't know that. But over the month of September and into the first week of October, I'll get a much better handle, especially from the state unemployment report, because that lists the actual names and who's getting paid. And I tie that out compared to all the people that we've um, basically submitted to them. So at that point, I'll know the savings that we have. And those savings, again, will be brought back to the superintendent and this committee to decide um, what's the most strategic plan to use them for. Uh, Brett. about being very strategic about this. Um, I started my career as a halftime teacher and I think that's something that we should really look at is filling some of these gaps where there's a 45 student class at North for social science. Um, we may not need a full-time teacher to you know, release some of that pressure. Um, and there's plenty of people out there I think that are willing to fill those positions just to get their start or uh, you know, just to work. So um, it's something that Boston does. I know other districts do it. Um, I think it could be a solution here for some of our issues, not a cure-all. But I, I know we have done it. You know, not often. It's uh, thank you. Uh, we certainly have done it. I know we had a preschool class, so we've done we've done that. Yeah, part time. And I know like half -time. people I worked with would actually work part time and work in different schools too. Yeah. And many times, so. as you said, that's getting their start. Yeah, they end up being yeah. hired. All right, I, I think before you leave, Aldo, the one thing uh, you bring up uh, a good point of uh, all of the, the changes, and each week we come with uh, another recommendation. But I do want to thank uh, Dr. Kathleen Moran and our HR office because when I look at what has happened to our staff with 179 RIF notices, blue slips, uh, trying to follow contract language, I want to thank Kim Gibson and our Brockton Education Association. You don't know behind the scenes, we sit and talk for hours and I mean hours, you know, about how we're going to work together to collaborate, to honor the contract, but at the same time, try to make sure when you talk about seniority lists and people's rights and people's certifications, uh, it has been nothing short of, of difficult at best. And again, trying to put people in position so they can have a successful year, you know, teaching our students. You know, it has certainly tried us 
uh, it, it isn't as easy as you look at some districts. People leave in uh, June, they come back to the same classroom, you open the doors, you know, you're ready to go, you've hired a few new teachers. That is not what's happened here. People are in different buildings. I think in the end, it's strength for those teachers to get out in our district, which as difficult as things are, it is very much united. When I look and I see the goodness in, in our teachers, and I know they're going to make this work, but I know uh, how difficult this whole process has been. So, you know, again, I want to thank all of the groups uh, coming together and working so, again, we could open up these doors. Thank you. Any other questions on Obama? Oh, um. Excuse me, Mr. Sullivan. Last week we were shot about $7,000 by bringing back the music teacher. Yes. Has that been straightened out as well? That has. There's, again, there's been additional <coughs> re additional resignations. So, so that's our way. So we have about 13000 to the, uh, that's to the a positive plus. now. That's a plus, yes. So Thank that, you. You know, each week I'll update. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Petronio? Okay. Good. And I would like to bring down uh, Mr. Michael Henry. I'm sure many of you uh, see this familiar face. He is president of the PAC at the George School. He's very involved with parents. Um, he's been instrumental in a number of fundraisers and uh, always very supportive of our students. But tonight he's talking to us about a workshop on concussions. Uh, I know we have seen movies about this. We're hearing it in sports, uh, certainly um, in our National Football League and, and down to our youngest students taking part. So, Mr. Henry, you want to share with us? Yes, thank you, Superintendent Smith. Um, as she mentioned, my name is Michael Henry, and I am the president of the George School PTA. And I'm also serving on the Massachusetts PTA on the Health and, and Wellness Committee. And with the partnership with the uh, state of Massachusetts Public Health, they have received a federal grant to do concussion program, a free concussion program throughout the state of Massachusetts and they wanted to do something in the South Shore area, and I jumped right on it and asked to see if the Brockton would be willing to host uh, a regional uh, concussion program here, and we'll be hosting it on October 2nd uh, of this year, 6 p.m. here at the Brockton High School. Um, sorry, I gotta take my glasses off. Um, so we're gonna be talking about the, the, the issues of concussion from, from sports, and how that affects our students here, um, concussions. And also, you know, people don't realize that you can also get concussions without doing sports as well. So they're gonna be talking about that. What are the symptoms and how can you um, recognize those issues uh, for kids to having concussions? And we're also gonna be talking about different preventive management of youth concussions. And also, uh, what are some of the regulatory um, for schools and the athletics so that the, you know parents are informed of what's going to happen if your kid has concussions and what should our athletic departments handle and how should they handle it. So I'm pleased to say that uh, with the partnership with the Massachusetts PTA and the Department of um, Public Health, we're gonna be ha hosting this here um, in October 2nd and it will be uh, passed around to all the other surrounding towns. So we're hoping that uh, we'll have a good turnout. It's about uh, an hour and a half program that's gonna be. So Mr. Henry, I'm gonna have you connect also with Michelle Bolton, our communication director, yes. to make sure that we're getting word out to our parents. We'll quickly get something up on the web and uh, hopefully you can connect with her for other uh, schools can probably do the same on their websites. Absolutely, and, j and also just to add that the Massachusetts PTA is, you know, very supportive and they understand what's been going on here in, in the city of Brockton. And they, you know, they indicated from, to me to, to inform you that whatever they can do to support um, here in the city of Brockton, they, you know, they want to. Um, they're trying to get out here more uh, in the state and also here in the city of Brockton to um, build more partnerships here in the city of Brockton. So whatever we can do, please let us know. Very good. Thank you. Thanks for your support. And I have uh, just one item to refer to subcommittee, and I would like you to, at that time, I'll, I'd like to afterwards invite Michelle to come up and show us some opening day pictures. We have a couple of pictures we can put up, I believe. But I want to, uh, the item to refer to subcommittee is the superintendent contract. And that is the evaluation and the setting of goals, which is the most important. So to finish out this past year and to set our goals uh, for the uh, next year, I know Wanda is trying to meet with you to set that up. So 
now that we have school up and going, um, I think I'd like to see that happen hopefully before the end of September. Part of it is a rating that has to be done for the superintendent to submit to the uh, Department of Education. Well. Yeah, probably the week after. Can you give us at least get school up and going? Okay. Can you reach out? And, oh, that's right. Do we have, do we, what is the uh, school committee night that week? Okay, we can we can go there. I just want to make sure it's set. Yes, that'd be good. Fine. So nine twenty six at six, and we'll get word out to everybody. Get you your documents. Okay, Are we all set, Michelle. And. Um, it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, started at the Raymond, went to North, um, then on to the Hancock, to West, to Brockton High School, then the Gilmore, and then finally the Downey. Oops, let's just start. Okay. This is the, this is the Raymond, yeah, to start. And we had uh, Brockton Cable was with us doing a back to school program at the Raymond North at West and Brockton High. Carol was being as enthusiastic as always. Yep, breakfast in the classroom was going strong. On to North. Gusto Martins. This is yep. your new principal at North, Allison Ramsey. Students getting settled. On to the Hancock. I had to walk three or four blocks. I parked my car in the uh, doctor's office. It was very busy at the Hancock today. Very organized. This is my favorite teacher <laughs> with her warrior, what is that, the Viking warrior hat or the? Some of these are a little bit jumbled. Now we've, we've jumped over to West for a few minutes, but we'll be back to the Hancock. They're practicing opening lockers. It's a big deal. Yeah, visiting a couple of classes. Over to Brockton High. A special ed office. Up oh, there's Dr. Murray and and uh, Sean, Sean Hearn. Hearn from North. Yep. Lauren Butler, your yep. assistant dean of the Yellow. Is that Yellow? Yep. Yellow House. Yeah, all the cafeteria workers were excited, and lunch was smelling pretty good. Popped into the Gilmore. The Gilmore was great. I arrived uh, right at lunchtime, but it was just very exciting to see. Uh, all the shiny new classrooms. Students were so excited. Uh, huh. I think my, fav best. my favorite student of the day, I think. Teeth coming <laughs> in, and we all remember those pictures. She's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, gym class. This is the gym they have. Yeah, we're practicing manners and rock, paper, scissors protocol. <laughs> lunch was the big deal of the day. Hot lunch, cheeseburgers, big hit. uniforms over to the Downey during the big rainstorm today. Uh, everybody was very busy. The spelling test to start the year off. Wow. Yeah, was, I know. <laughs> Jump right in. Tough, tough teachers, Kim. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're back to the Hancock. This is McCabe. Yeah. Well, you have to t I have to tell you, so Michelle said to me, Superintendent, you need to grab one of the students. I want all of you to know that that very large, beautiful woman, and I'm talking the blonde, was my fourth grade student. <laughs> That's when you know you've been around a long time. Tara Shea, Bl yep. Shea Blake. Dr. Murray, posing in front of the art display. I was trying to be very esoteric. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies of the office. <laughs> oh, got a, a double here. 
You're back to the Downey. Very nice. Yep. Dr. Cancel, Dr. Julian yep. Andra. Downey staff. With Principal Kelly. Yep. Mrs. Chris Yakinis. Yep. Lots of learning going on. I think we have a different set of cafeteria staff at the high school. Dr. Murray yeah. and his staff in the Azure. Yep. And oh, back. Get these folks again. They've got a couple of doubles. Oh, there's Joe Campbell working Taking on care some of IT. technology. Yep. Yep. Principal O'Brien. Yep. Oh, we got a couple of, couple of duplicates. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep, we got a couple. Oh. Oh, and, oh. and our, our Campbell team. Yeah. Campbell and Campbell <laughs> over at West yeah. Middle School. Yeah, yeah. yeah the Mr. Campbell. They were very calm today. For, for two new administrators, yeah. they had it all figured out. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I think we're going backwards on these. But I do, I yeah. wanted to um, show a couple of pictures from. Oh, the Parent Information the, Center? Um, yeah, we wanted to show you how packed this was. Uh, Dr. Yeah. DeBarro Oops. sent us a couple of pictures to show what their days have been like. Yeah, if I can just bring this down. I've got, um, I've got a picture of the, the waiting line at the Parent so Information Center inside. you can see through the, the windows, the line, people filled waiting in the waiting area. Yeah, and then um, you wanted to see what the room looked like at the high school before. I'm not sure you're getting the full effect, but yeah. we had 80 ribbons lining. Of course, that was before the teachers entered in the morning. Yeah. But those were uh, signifying the staff that were yeah. here a year ago mm. and not here yesterday. Yeah. And so, then we had our collection for Hurricane Harvey, and this was just part of what uh, staff brought in to, to help out with the effort. Harvey's Heroes. So we'll be, we'll be collecting that and then uh, possibly working with the MTA to, to a joint effort to ship that off or we'll be finding a way to get that where it needs to go. And the superintendent. Yeah, Thank you. That's it. Thank you. And Mayor, that is my report. about new business. Anyone with new business? Oh. I do want to tell everybody that this is sponsored by Chotwell's. It's a mobile teaching kitchen, kitchen coming to Brockton High. On, on Tuesday, September 12th and Wednesday the 13th, Chotwell's is sponsoring a mobile teaching kitchen in the Azure parking lot at Brockton High School. Talk about innovation. So it's a, the Mobile Teaching Kitchen is a custom designed shipping container built specifically for K-12 students to actively participate in a food education lab. So Chotwell chefs will lead the class with cooking demonstrations, discussion of food origins, health benefits, and a better for you cooking techniques. Students from the hospitality and restaurant class have been invited to come to the Mobile Teaching Kitchen, working alongside the Chotwell chefs and dietitians in preparing white beans and chicken tacos with a citrus avocado salsa. So if any of you can get over there to see that, that looks like a lot of fun. And finishing up, I, I do want to note, I got a wonderful letter from B21, uh, Michael Gallerani. 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 And what he did, we have a program where we put students in internships. And this past summer, we actually put one of our special needs students along with other student interns uh, it was a young student named uh, Thomas Von George who he couldn't have said enough about to the point that he talked about making sure that he was keeping this student's resume on file. He came to work every day with a wonderful attitude. He was a great co-worker. He got jobs done again and again and again. So thank you to B21 and all our businesses that bring all of our student interns and see the quality and the value of supporting uh, those kinds of collaborations with students in the Brockton Public Schools. So thank you, sorry. No, that's okay. Anyone else with new business? Sure, Mr. Minichello. Well, I guess when we have our next um, transportation safety and security subcommittee meeting, Perhaps we can invite the student who spoke at the beginning 
to put that as an agenda item so that we can have a little more of a dialogue and a conversation regarding those types of safety type of issues. Just be, it'll be a, a better venue to be able to have a little back and forth discussion about um, you know her suggestions and perhaps you know some of her friends could also come that um, see this as an issue to be discussed you know yeah do we we do we have her phone telephone yes. number Wanda yes okay great hi before you leave could you give us your telephone number so yeah. that okay wonderful okay thank you Wanda has it time great okay Anyone else? Joyce. I just wanted to um, thank the Brookfield School and the Ashfield School. I had the pleasure of attending. This is my second year being there for the first day. And we're dealing with budgets. We're dealing with so many other issues throughout the year. But we, this is the fun stuff, being there and seeing them bright and early in the morning, some smiles. And I, you, you can see some of the students were a little nervous, you know, starting middle school for the first time. but. I just want to t um, thank Dr. Lovell and Ms. Masson for just allowing me to be part of it this morning. So, um, and, and good luck. Hopefully all our students have a wonderful 2017, 2018 year. But. My best moment of visiting the schools this morning was outside of uh, North Middle School. And so, you know, I welcoming students back and chatting with parents and talking to some of our staff and a woman came up to me with her child and she said do you work here so i said kind of yeah <laughs> so uh, it's good to stay humble so it was uh, actually got a big kick out of it and actually knew the answer to the question and walked to her and her Did daughter to with me and get a boat or? Uh, no i i why i actually knew right where they were supposed to go and showed them but Anyhow, I, I found it funny. Anyone else? Did you tell else? her you were mayor? Huh? Did you tell her you were the mayor? No. You were humble. And I actually knew where, where her daughter was supposed to go. One other quick shout out to the um, public properties department and the custodians who took care of the pools over the summer. Um, you know, there was a lot of obviously warm days, but um, the pools in Brockton are kept immaculate, extremely clean. And um, I know some of the gentlemen who monitor and keep those, uh, keep the chlorine levels in check and the cleanliness. And, and a lot of kids, you know, utilized, you know, those pools on both sides of the city. Um, you know, so a shout out to them. All right, thank you. As well as the high school pool, which I believe the custodial staff takes care of. All right. 822, anyone else? It's like a subtle way of saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long day. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion's been made. Seconded. Seconded. All in favor? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone.